Welcome back to the show. We got a great one lined up. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. The next three things that are set crypto free, ladies and gentlemen. Man, do I love the smell of crypto in the morning. Let's get right to it. $2.02 trillion market cap for crypto. The market is up 10%. Come on in. Bitcoin now 54,000 plus. Ethereum 2400 plus. USD Tether 114 billion plus market cap. USDC number six spot 33 billion US market cap. Uh, and or market cap for USDC XRP is 49 cents right now. We're up 9.8 percent on the 24 hour. We're still off by 20 percent uh, plus on the seven day, much like the rest of the market. We've taken a beating over the last few days here. But let's look at the range of price ranging between 47 and 52 cents. One thing we could say from the technical analysis, uh, analysis and uh, the uh, uh, charts from this morning is we know that we've experienced a dip, but we have higher lows, not lower lows, higher lows. That is very important for an overall trend where the market is going. So uh, we'll keep an eye on it sitting at 50 cents right now. I want to remind everybody, Link2 is the best home for private equity in the world. It really is. If you're not sure if you're accredited or not, it takes less than five minutes to figure out. I tell you, it is super easy and it's even faster to fund your account. I mean, they have streamlined this to give you the best access to the best private equity across every gross sector of the economy that you can imagine. Over 80 companies available, over 400 million invested on the platform, and over 1 million registered users, ladies and gentlemen. This is the most affordable minimums that you'll find in private equity. Normally in private equity, it's 100,000, 250,000 minimums. Here, you can find 5,000, $2,500 minimums. They make it very affordable. It is the best opportunity for private equity in the world as far as I'm concerned. Click the link to my sponsor below and get started. And they have some amazing promotions too. So make sure you ask about those once you sign up. Look at this, breaking uh, Kamala Harris. I'm going to start calling her Kamala because they say uh, Kamala is the proper way. So I'll start calling her Kamala because uh, it's a piece of garbage, right? <laughs> this woman is a piece of, oh my goodness, boy. The more I'm learning about her, the worse it gets. But nevertheless, she picks Tim Walls as a running mate to be her VP. Uh, Minnesota Governor Tim Walls is supposed to be her VP now. And we'll see if this choice brings a seasoned Midwestern politician into the race, aiming to broaden appeal across key swing states. Oh, boy. Well, listen here. Here's the other side of the aisle. Tom Emmer, who's from that same region, knows a lot about it. And if you want to know what Tim's handiwork looks like, here it is. After he helped fuel those riots from George Floyd. Remember all of that? It's not surprising Kamala Harris, I'll call her Kamala, it's not hard to do. Kamala Harris picked Tim Walls to be her running mate. He embodies the same disastrous economic open borders, soft on crime policies Harris has inflicted on our country the last four years. Walls is an empty suit who has worked to turn Minnesota into Harris' home state of California and solidifies this ticket's full embrace of a radical America last agenda. And again, these are pictures of some of Tim's hard work here in Minnesota. So we got problems here, right? We got problems here. Uh, you know, I'll get to it in a second. Understanding what has happened with the collapse that has been taking place financially in the traditional markets like Japan and the carry trade issue I don't think you're going to get a better understanding than this video with Kyle Bass right here. I'm going to let this play because everyone needs to level set and understand exactly what's been taking place and how I've been explaining that everything, every central bank is connected to the hip to the other one. Cascading effects. Here's Kyle. Please don't sleep on this. You're going to want this. If you're not quite understanding as I haven't, understood every gap of what's going on here. This is a great gap, Phil. He nails it here. Steve was just hitting on the bond market, the bullies in the bond market. That's They've right. already been pushing around interest rates. Is the bond market trying to do the work of the Federal Reserve right now? 
You know, there's a there's a more technical answer to this, Brian. And and uh, late last year, um, you saw that you saw the way the government funds itself go from bonds to bills. And I know that that sounds like an arcane idea, but what that did is it released another two trillion ish of, of liquidity into the market going into the elections. And one can think that these bodies are apolitical, but I can tell you that uh, knowing what's gone on behind the scenes, I can tell you that there have been some political currents going on there. And, and therefore, now the cries for uh, intermediate cuts are coming. Remember, back in uh, 2000, Greenspan in mid-December announced that he was probably going to cut uh, at their January meeting, and it forced him to cut 50 basis points intermediate on January 3rd, 2001. So that even if the Fed's not intending to cut, Here's what happens. They, they say they don't care about the stock market, but every time one of them talks on television, they go watch what the stock market does as a result of them talking. <laughs> uh, and so if, if the stock market rolls over and high end consumption collapses, which is likely to happen, uh, then you have the whole economy rolling over because it's high end consumption holding the economy up. Uh, and you know, that, will, that would make the Harris win less likely. So I think you can expect some aggressive Fed cutting between now and the November election. Okay, you went there, and it's uh, so I'm going to go. I'm going to follow up with that as well, Kyle. How much? Because you know the internet mob is out there blaming this on election cycle potential changes, and I will get to Japan in a second. How much, if any, of this move is politically related? I mean, the move so far, Brian, is just is just the fact that all of the liquidity that was pumped into our markets post COVID uh, has kind of played its course. Uh, you know, you had the Fed increasing its balance sheet by, uh, you know, literally from four trillion to nine trillion. Mm. Uh, we expanded the money supply by forty percent in eighteen months, Brian. Mm. It's no wonder we had record high stock prices and asset prices. Then we went from funding by bonds to bills and the Treasury general account and the, and the overnight reverse repo at the Fed put in another two trillion of, of uh, uh, fuel to the fire. And just so what people understand, going from bonds to bills, going from the long term bond to a short term holding bill, Treasury T bills, right? Because no one has the confidence to hold on to something long term. What he's explaining here. Is the I said this to Honorable Cristiano Carlo on stage at XRP Las Vegas 2024. There's not going to be an email that goes out that says that we've lost this important line in the sand called confidence on your money, and now it's just worthless paper. Well, moving from bond position to bills is essentially that email saying, I don't believe you about your two-year note. I don't believe you about your five, 10, and 30-year note. Go fly a kite with it. And if I'm gonna hold anything, I'll hold a T-bill because I can get out of that quicker. And now that fuel's kind of burning off and now you're seeing things turn. Uh, we all looked at each other and said, hey, the Fed raised rates you know, to five and a half percent. You know, why hasn't the economy uh, slowed down? It's because the the, kind of the powers that be were pushing a lot of liquidity into the markets. Well, now that liquidity is no longer here. So, Brian, this is a natural result uh, of, a, of an unnatural situation where the Fed has been extremely accommodative and the Treasury and Congress have spent like drunken sailors and now kind of the time to pay the pipers here and there's a liquidity gap. Um, I think you're going to see um, uh, cuts, aggressive cuts between now and your end. You know how markets work, and you get all the stuff, the carry trade, let's borrow Japan, we're going to buy here, we're going to short vol, short volatility, that's all on what You get the mechanics, right? You can rebuild the engine. For 99.9% .9 of people watching, listening right now, it's not what they do for a living. Can you explain to them how these rather sort of obscure moves in Japanese currency can see somebody like in Davenport, Iowa, lose 10% of their investments because hedge funds are doing all these things with currencies and, and borrowing against them. He's about to give a great explanation. But what I want you to understand is, is that Japan for more than 20 years has been stuck at 0% interest with their money because they're stuck, period. Japan has been struggling for decades upon decades with their financial system. 
So, remember, SBI, Yoshitaka Katao, CEO, had said XRP used by every bank in Japan in 2025. Understanding that XRP is a bridge asset, a bridge currency. Look, I don't know whether that's right about 2025 or not, but what I do know is, is that Japan is beautifully set up to begin to use something like a bridge asset to begin to work on getting themselves out of the quagmire they have been stuck in for decades with their money being stuck at zero negative interest rates. It just oh, it's, it's a disaster what they've been dealing with for decades. Japan as a country is a perfect candidate, I believe, for something like the introduction of XRP. I believe that's why we've heard Yoshitaka Katao be so bullish on it and understand why he's been a partner to Ripple and R3 for so many years. Keep listening. You know, I'm not going to blame hedge funds. What's more important, Brian, is the people of Japan. You have a, a government that had, that had actually taken their country into what I call the Keynesian endpoint. You have, a, you have a point in time in which you have so much borrowing on balance sheet and you've got a currency and you've got this unholy trinity where you're trying to hold your currency in place, you're trying to hold your interest rates in place, and everything in the world is priced in dollars and the and the United States exports 50% inflation to you in dollar terms over the last three and a half years, what do you do? Well, you have to pretend that you can raise rates, but you actually can't raise rates. Your currency, the Japanese currency has gone from basically 100 to 160. So if you're a Japanese saver, you've lost 60% of your ability to buy things in that move and to compensate for that, the Japanese stock markets come up with you. But now you've had the Japanese yen go from 160 to 145 in a nanosecond, and you've had the Japanese stock market drop from 42,000 to 31,000 in a month. Oh. You've seen a 25% decline in the stock market in a month. You saw their market go from plus six to minus six in one day today. Oh. Uh, and that's because, again, like this massive trade is unwinding, but it's it's not necessarily hedge funds. It's the savers of Japan. It's what Japan does. Uh, uh, they they go uh, buy dollars and they invest in dollar assets with their money, fearful of the fact that they're going to lose more of their purchasing power in yen. And then when that trade unwinds, they have to panic and close everything out. And that's what you're seeing going on, coupled with the fact that the U.S. economy is certainly rolling over. No question about it. I don't think you can get a better explanation than that right there. And I hope that helps gap fill for anybody understanding concern. I think this poises us global stage to start introducing XRP in a country that could benefit greatly from the second they begin doing it is in Japan. Not to mention the fact, remember this fun little clip? So eliminating the Federal Reserve is, um, is best for promoting economic stability. Yes. Thank you. Eliminating the Federal Reserve is the best for promoting economic stability. And Jerome Powell says, yes. Then there was this clip. Remember this? Who knows? Maybe we'll pay off our $35 trillion, hand him a little crypto check, right? We'll hand him a little Bitcoin and wipe out our $35 trillion. But how do you- <laughs> now, we know he's pro crypto. That's why I'm showing you that. Then don't forget, $10 million to mint T-bills. That's the short version, the short version, right? Right? Not the long-term hold, the notes and bonds, T-bills, short-term position. On the XRP ledger, ledger would give us a number six spot in the T-bill tokenization ranking right here. So this is where it would put us right here. Right? Right there. Pretty damn interesting. You see the whole market is currently as tiny anyway. Yes, it is, but not for very long. And I'm going to tell you what I think is going to change that here, too. This is a reminder to everybody that former Ripple Labs board member Gene Sperling is now joining the Kamala Harris campaign. He is a former chief White House advisor. And now uh, and we know he was at Ripple Labs back in 2015 and now joining Kamala Harris's team. Well, you know what? Operation Choke Point 2.0 is very real, and this may look bullish for crypto in the Harris campaign, but I have zero confidence in Kamala Harris as the President of the United States. Uh, I had zero confidence in her as the Vice President 
with the cackling and laughing and knowing that she doesn't take anything about what she does serious. And she considers all of us to be idiots because I've heard her speak and you can't speak the way she does and think that other people are smart too. The way she speaks is obvious that she thinks all of us are dumb like cattle. It's unbelievable. And I have to say, the SEC is pushing back against Coinbase's subpoena request, calling them breathtakingly broad and blatantly improprietary. Or improper, improprietary. Um, it says here, uh, reporting from Cheyenne uh, Legion reports, and I say, look, I've got to let go of political ideologies. I'm embracing the candidate who's made it clear they will support American innovation in crypto. I'm voting Trump because Operation Choke Point 2.0 is very much real and still alive and kicking. They could easily take away Gensler's position as chair and remove him as the head chair. Right now, today, she could do that. And she could do it through a multiple multitude of ways. There's m many pathways. But nevertheless, let's get back to what Kyle was explaining here. And now the U.S. Federal Reserve calls emergency meeting as Japan markets collapse. Uh, emergency settlement? <laughs> uh, we are still waiting for Judge Torres' final decision, which could come sooner than we all think. And this is where I tell you the three things I think that are going to set crypto free. One is this ruling on the remedy space, which I anticipate being positive for Ripple. Regardless if the SEC appeals, it's a positive ruling. It's positive for crypto, XRP, the entire space. Number two would be getting the launch of the real USD stablecoin on the XRP ledger and the Ethereum network, giving a combined total of 400 billion market cap exposure between the two networks. That's going to be massive. Then we have to have a FIT21 Act or stablecoin bill that allows the tokenization of all other traditional products, not just money. Stocks, bonds, derivatives, we know the rest of it. It all needs to be tokenized because it is within that tokenization and introduction of stable coins for commodities and dollars, as well as central bank digital currencies for the countries that are going to do it. These become the tokenized vehicles that allow for the long tail pairing on the back end for XRP to begin to make markets in ways that we've never seen done before in the history of trading. Period. Full stop. I think we need these three things, at least on the immediate front, to set the market free as well as Ripple and XRP. Not to mention a number four bonus would be all of those three things and then the announcement of a Ripple IPO. Come on in. Well, we're one step closer for one of the three things. Ripple will be releasing the real USD soon. Ripple has announced that it's preparing to launch its RLUSD stablecoin for instant cross-border payments, ladies and gentlemen. Things are heating up. Like I said, ruling in the remedies phase, launch of the stablecoin, and then legislation for stablecoins in general. That will allow for the long tail pairing of XRP to go to work worldwide, making pairings in the tokenized world that have never been possible before in the history of mankind and trading. And watch out. And with that, I give you this. If you don't think it, you can just simply know it. Shout out to Smoke Dog for this one. Ripple Stellar. As most cited use cases of blockchain technologies for remittance and payments. Now, before I read the next line, I have said over and over and over again, Ripple, Stellar, and Circle are the three pillars to the digital economy for the United States of America to interact with the rest of the known world. There'll be more, I'm sure. But these are the three that have been the constant. Circle for USDC, Ripple because of XRP, Stellar because of XLM are the three pillars for the United States Foundation as they represent themselves and interact into the digital economy that is coming sooner than all of us think. And it goes on to say down here in the second line, 
Only Ripple and Stellar provide applications of DLTs to correspondent banking infrastructures. Only. <laughs> yeah, I got to say, I might not know where everything's going, but I like the way it's looking. I told you I love to smell a crypto in the morning. Give us a follow at digperspectives.com. Click the Freedom Zone, get it for next to nothing. Or join us in the DPMG before we close that window and become a member in there and get the Freedom Zone for free. You want to learn how to do things like use automated market makers on the XRP ledger or other amazing courses that we have in there or just be around the like-minded people that are interested in not only growing their wealth but protecting and maintaining it too. That's what we're doing inside of there. And I hope all of you will join us. Click the link below and I will see you on the next one.